Okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk about something a bit different than what we've been talking. So the collaborative is not on bold face. We will see why. So I will be give just a brief motivation for this kind of work. Uh, present a hardware software platform to do to achieve this work. Some test deployment and uh, ongoing work. So this is I usually present this slide on when I talk about NILM, which is the challenges. There are two big categories of challenges. The load identification that 80 or 90% of the community is trying to achieve. And then there's the evaluation challenges, which is actually how to make this work and how to properly evaluate these kind of things. And this itself is divided in two broad categories, which is a value proposition what's the value of this aggregated data? And this will become even more important as the IoT movement gains traction and we get this aggregated data without nil. And also performance evaluation of algorithms, how to compare them, how to benchmark what are proper performance metrics. And this actual presentation is on data acquisition and labeling of data sets, which is one of the things that we are struggling. I hear it a lot of time, we don't have enough data. So a brief taxonomy for data sets. We have eventless data sets, which are, if you look at them, most of the data sets out there are eventless because you only need the aggregate consumption and the time series of the individual appliances. So you just, it's not easy to get, as you might think, but it's slightly easier than eventless, event-based, because on the event-based, you need to actually label the transitions. And this is going to become really, really painful. So here's a summary of data set. There's way more than this. This is just half of the sample. And if you look at it, there's only three data sets that can be used for event-based nil. One is blue, which was the first one. There's sysdata ed, which is the output of this work. And embed data set that was released in June. But for example, for embed, there's data since 2013. And it took them five years to release the data. So labeling is quite complex. Why is that? So it's hard to build all the hardware software platforms that actually work. All the communication issues, the Wi-Fi communications, the data granularity that you need for some appliances is not the same for all the appliances. So for example, clothes washers, you will see that they need a lot more granularity to, to be labeled. You have hardwired appliances that how can you put a plug on these appliances? And then we saw yesterday Grant talking about people that disconnect stuff. And then you suddenly you lose your data. And then labeling is tedious, error prone, and subject to interpretation. Like even between us NILM, NILM researchers, we might interpret an event in a different way. When does it start? When does it end? So even if we label data sets, we might have different labeling strategies. So is this a real problem? Is this research that's worth doing? In my opinion, yes, because I've been looking at, and I'm happy to see event-based approaches, especially in industry. So which makes, what makes this more valid is having event-based out there. Because if you don't do event-based, then labeling maybe it's not so important. So what have we done to try to overcome this? So we build a, a platform that is twofold. It collects data, but it's also able to get other data sets and help assisting in creating the, uh, labels. So our data collection setup is, is composed of three, two main components. We have a high, high frequency data acquisition board that can sample up to 14 simultaneous channels. And with we actually store the data on a slightly different way. We store the data on audio files, high frequency audio files. This helps to, for example, make the size much smaller because we don't need timestamps. But this is just a sequence of, of data. And I also have the one really ch big challenge is synchronization between high, the whole aggregate data and the uh, disaggregate appliances. You have a lot of issues with synchronizations. For example, Blues, they had at some point six second gap between the aggregate 
and uh, disaggregated data. So this is something that really needs to be tackled by the acquisition team. So this is what uh, data looks like in this platform when we collect the data. This is current and voltage file. And what we want to do is you can use embedded metadata to add the events. So we can say the on and off events. And also we extended the format to support areas like for the labeling activities. Like cooking starts at one point and ends at the other point or doing laundry. So we can keep all the labels in the same file. So for the individual appliance collection, we used plugwise. I think a lot of people use plugwise. So there's quite uh, some challenges with, with like Zigbee networks. If you disconnect the plug and you don't tell the system, okay, don't look for this plug anymore, you would be losing one round trip. So data collection gets granular as you start losing, uh, losing appliances. Then what comes is the, how do we provide a semi-automatic labeling? Why do we even call it semi-automatic? Because we are doing two things. First, we are running event detectors on the actual individual loads. So you only have one appliance per circuit or at least two appliances. You have metadata. This should be really easy to do. A very simple detector should do that. And then we build this graphical user interface. It's some the category of intelligent user interfaces that assist the user in doing complex tasks. So, as I said, we use a very, very simple detector. This is just an expert heuristic that computes the difference in the mean between two windows. And if it's above a threshold and the events are separated by at least n seconds, in this case, we set it to three seconds, it's an event. Otherwise, you just move forward. There's an illustration. On the right hand, on the top, you see all the, the, all the differences between consecutive windows. You set the threshold, all these things are possible events. And since you set the elapsed time for three seconds, you just discard everything that's not. Of course, that this works well for individual appliances. If you do this on a household, three seconds is way too much time, right? Because a lot of stuff can happen in three seconds. As for the interface, so our interface loads. So this works both in real time, loading the data from the smart meters the individual meters, or in offline loading data from existing data sets. So what we do is for a given data set, we load the appliance consumption, we load the results of a detection algorithm. We have like 24 models, different models, and you have like this bird's eye view of the data that you get to see what's out there. So you get to see a zoom in of the data and then you can actually supervise the process. So everything that's automatic is shown in the interface in red. So this came from an algorithm. And what you can do is you can add new labels. If you see that the system missed the label, you can go there and you just click that sample and you add it. And if the, simple detect the system detects a false positive, you can go there, you double click it to remove it. This is one, one operation mode. And this is the job of people to supervise the process, which is less tedious, but still uh, somehow a bit tedious. One thing that we had to do, of course, was limit the amount of data on the interface, because you cannot just load 4,000 points, because if you look at the top 30,000 samples, a lot of them are just zeros. So instead of averaging the data, because if you average the data, when you, when you label, you're labeling an average point, which might not correspond to the actual sample on the, on the ground truth file. We did this simple steady state detector algorithm that goes through the data and removes all the steady state areas because that's are not, they're not of interest for the end user. For example, here from 30,000 points, what we need actually to show the user is only 374 because everything else, this is also something that we should think when you do our algorithms, maybe you don't need to feed all the data because a lot of data is just there doing nothing, just filling the gap. So we did the deployment, which is sys.ad, uh, one house, 17 appliances, 10 days. 
we have a second one for uh, three months with like 19 appliances. This is still being pre processed. One thing we have to do is all your files, they store the data between minus one and one. So we have to scale the data to this, to this range of values. And appliance consumption was stored, uh, like recollected every half, every two seconds. So plug-wise works like this. If you have 10 appliances, a round trip takes one second. If you have 20 appliances, it's gonna take two seconds. If you have 30 appliances, it's gonna take, so it's guys like a linear, so you get, you lose half one second of data as we increase the appliances. So when, how do we say that this is good or bad or should be just even worse? It? So we look at two things, the aggregate energy explained and the actual semi-automatic labeling. So for the semi-automatic labeling, what we want to say is that, does this remove the need for user intervention? And we, for us, user intervention is the amount of clicks. It's very simplistic because there's also, we haven't looked at the mouse moving, uh, like scrolling, we should also look at that. But for now, we only look at mouse clicks. So our goal is to minimize the number of false negatives, which is events that you have to add and uh, minimize the false positives, the events you have to remove. And we did this, first we look at the aggregate. This is not so relevant. This is just the wonders of data collection. At some point, we have more aggregate energy, more disaggregated, the sum of disaggregated is higher than the aggregate. This happens when some system fails. So if the aggregate data system fails, you end up with more disaggregate data than you should. So this can be confusing, and this can sometimes break an algorithm. But the most important part is actually semi-automatic labeling. So we did 24 models with a parameter sweep, 24 models of this heuristic, and we applied each model to each of the 17 appliances. And this is what we got. So the green are the success, very success cases, like the kettle, oven, refrigerator, stove, TV, water heater. And the red are the complicated cases and the clothes, clothes washer is, is the first one is an even more, it's a whole different situation. First, we'll look at the success cases. So for a refrigerator, this is two days of data. We don't have to do anything. There's a model that does everything for us. No clicks, no user intervention, done. For the stuff, it's, it's less, more complicated, but still, we can go from 118 clicks that we would have to give to 65, so this is a big decrease. And then we go to more complex stuff, like in this case, we have three appliances in the same circuit, and simply, it, there's not enough granularity to find events here. And any detector will find noise. So at this point, there's a whole different problem that we have to solve. And also, we can have a lot of false positives due to noise. So at this point, if you have a lot of false positives, it's a lot of clicks just to remove them. So what you can do is an alternative approach, which is you can confirm true positives and discard everything else. But this has it's a sword with two edges, because if you have a lot of true positives, it's a lot of clicks. So this has to be handled with care. So we need to improve the interface also to find different ways to delete stuff. More examples, we did this with other two data sets. We did this with red, one week in red. If you look at the kitchen outlets, on the top is three second data, and we had a lot of false positives. Because remember, we set the threshold for three seconds, and every three seconds we lost either one on or one off transition. But the same thing using one hertz, detects everything, so this is sitting. The granularity of the ground truth is important at this point. We also did it for AM PDS. This is one minute data. I don't know if, if we are doing event based in one minute. I don't know if people's brave enough, but it's also a very complicated case. If you look at clothes washer and the, it's really difficult to label events here because there's only actually start and end. Maybe everything in between should be ignored. 
So the question is, and it's about the collaboration, collaborative is, can we crowdsource this? Can we put this in a crowdsourcing platform? Can we pay people to do this? So what we are doing now, it's the, I call it pros versus Joes. We are pros and there's a lot of Joes out there that want to make some money, right? So our goal, there's a platform, I will give you the link that we should enroll who wants to participate in this. And as pros, we will be doing some labeling to get some baseline, so to get some feeling of how this should be done. And at the same time, we will have this on a crowdsourcing platform. People will be labeling. We have to figure out a way to pay this because maybe my last experience for 10 cents, I got a lot of people doing stuff. So you can find a model, but you first need to figure out if it works. And then of course, the idea is that Joes become pros as we get really good at labeling. So if you cannot tell a Joe from a pro by looking at the labels, he, sh he should be promoted and maybe make more, make more money or something. And there's the no-go Joes. If you don't do anything, you just get out and you just dropped. So we are doing this right now. We are doing this with one data set, with not one, but with existing data sets. We are doing this with SysData. We can do this with Ukadel. There's a lot of pre-processing that, that we need to do before getting this live. But my goal is also to make this real-time labeling. So we have a test bed going on in Madeira Island. We have 20 domestic solar production installations and we are monitoring the production and the consumption. And in 10 houses, we will install plugwise. And plugwise will be uploading the data every minute. So what we want to do is to see if we can have near to real time labeling and confirmation and then feed that back to, to train the algorithms. So real time improvements. It's not the homeowner because one of the, our problems is having the homeowner labeling. We don't want that. We, but if someone else is out there, it's doing the labels for 10 cents or 20 cents or whatever, maybe this can work. Okay. Hopefully we can, this is the collaborative part of the thing. I would like to get some questions.